This session will be from 10 a.m. to 11.40 a.m. The session will be of one hour and 40 minutes. And we will be now discussing about storytelling session and tips for fifth, sixth, and seventh grade students by Jyoti Kanchuri. Speaking about ma'am, ma'am is a professional storyteller from Bangalore who has conducted nearly 2,000 storytelling sessions in her eight plus years. Ma'am is also an accredited storyteller certified by Kathalya's International Academy of Storytelling, Bangalore, India. She has been an integral part of Bangalore-based Cozy Noob Children's Literature Fest, BIC Fest 2019, as well as the Children and Teens International Online Festival conducted in 2020 by the Art of Living Foundation. Since 2016, Ma'am has been the storytelling teacher in the Bethany High School, Bangalore, from schools to LA corporates, from teacher training workshop to story performances. Ma'am's storytelling journey has taken her all over the Karnataka as well as to Tamil Nadu and Telangana. She also enjoys reading, singing, whistling, anchoring musical shows, and traveling. So without wasting any further ado, before handing over to you, ma'am, I would like to give you some instructions. We will be sharing the computer sound like this when there is only 10 minutes left to give you a warning bell to conclude the session. So let us start with the session. Handing over this to you, ma'am, the stage is all yours. Thank you. Thank you, Sora. Hello. Good morning. Howdy. Buenos dias, Jambo, Guten Tag, Bonjour, Ni Hao, Konnichiwa, Namaste. Are you wondering why I am greeting you in so many different languages? Well, that's because you and I are going to travel around the world in the next 90 minutes. Hmm? Hmm. Are you wondering how on earth we are going to travel around the world in 90 minutes and that too in these COVID times? Well, to travel around the world, you don't need a car or a plane or a bus or a train or a boat or a ship. Absolutely not. You need just your imagination and plenty of stories to take you wherever you want. So are you ready to travel with me around the world? Because I surely am. Well, as Saurabh said, uh, my name is Jyoti Kunjur. I am a professional storyteller from uh, Bengaluru, India. And it's my privilege and honor to be a part of the Orange City Lit Fest. You know, I really wish I could have come to Nagpur and enjoyed the hospitality of your beautiful city and eaten some of the delicious oranges that Nagpur is famous for. But because of COVID, uh, we have to do this whole thing virtually, but no problem. Someday I will visit Nagpur and meet all of you and taste the delicious oranges. Well, the first story that I have for you today is based in England and it is full of magic, full of wizards and maybe a witch or two. I hope there are some Harry Potter fans out there because I am a total Potterhead. In fact, I stood in line to buy the books at midnight. Yes, that's how crazy about Harry Potter I used to be. So the first story today is from the Tales of Beedle the Bard, written by J.K. Rowling, a mention of which you can find in the Deathly Hallows. I love the story and I hope you will like it too. Once upon a time, a long, long time ago, there lived a wizard who used his magic generously and wisely to help all his neighbors. 
he never told anyone that he was a wizard because he didn't want people to get scared of him. Instead, he told them that all his magic potions and poultices and charms and antidotes sprang out of his little cauldron, which he called his lucky cooking pot. He said that everything came out ready-made from that pot. Well, he helped everyone, not only in his village, but in the neighboring villages as well. Therefore, all of them really loved and respected this kind wizard. As time went by, the wizard grew older and older and one day after reaching a ripe old age, he died. And he left all his belongings, his property, his house, everything to his son. Now this son was the opposite, opposite of his father. He didn't believe in helping people, especially muggles who were non-magical people. He thought it was an utter waste of time. In fact, when his father was alive, the father and son would always have arguments and fights because the son thought that helping muggles was an absolute waste of time. Anyway, after the father's death, as the son was walking around the house, he happened to peep into that little cauldron, that lucky cooking pot. To his surprise, he found a small package inside it and his name was written out on top of that package. He was curious and excited. What could be inside that package? Maybe his father had bequeathed him some amazing magical object. Or maybe there was a precious gem of untold value. What could be? What could be inside that package? He couldn't contain his curiosity any longer. And he opened the package. And inside, he found one small thick furry slipper. Now, how many slippers do you wear? Two, no? And they are as big as your feet. But this was one slipper and it was so tiny. There was no way the wizard could put his foot inside it. Along with the slipper, there was a note in his father's handwriting, which said, in the fond hope, my son, that you will never need it. The son didn't understand anything that had been written in that note and cursed his father's age-softened mind. He thought his father had gone a little cuckoo at the end of his life. And so he took that slipper and threw it back into the cauldron. And he thought that he would use the cauldron as a dustbin. He didn't want to use it for making potions and helping people. That evening, there was a knock at the door. There stood an old lady looking very worried and she spoke to the wizard and said, Kind sir, my granddaughter has been afflicted by warts all over her face. She's in great pain. Your father used to help me, kind sir. Can you also please help me? Go away! The wizard roared. I don't care about your granddaughter's what? And he slammed the door on her face. No sooner did this happen, a loud sound came from the kitchen. The wizard took out his wand, lit it up and walked to the kitchen to see what the sound was, what that noise was. Once he entered the kitchen, a strange sight met his eyes. That pot, that cooking pot, now had a small brass foot, one foot. And what was that pot doing? It was hopping. 
and the hopping was creating such a noise clang 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 so he went closer <clears throat> disgusting object he said because the entire surface of that pot was covered with warts and there were more warts sprouting oh the wizard tried everything to get rid of the pot he tried to vanish it but he couldn't do that he tried to clean it magically and with a scrubber he couldn't do it finally he tried to push it out of the house couldn't push it out too and the racket the sound oh, was driving him crazy finally he gave up and decided to go to bed but that pot followed him hopping behind him clang 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 he climbed up the stairs the pot followed him he tried to enter his bedroom quickly but the pot got in before him and all night long the pot clang 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 and the wizard didn't get any sleep at all tell me what happens to you when you don't sleep all night long i'll tell you what happens to me i get a splitting headache my eyes hurt i'm irritable and i'm grumpy oh and i don't want to do anything i just want to sleep again it's very difficult to fall asleep that's exactly what happened to the wizard he didn't sleep one wink all night long and the next morning he was in a grumpy mood so he thought he would make some hot yummy porridge for himself he went to the kitchen followed by the pot and started preparing some delicious porridge he served himself took the bowl sat at the table and was just about to start his breakfast when there came another knock at the door this time there stood a man with a worried expression on his face he said Oh, tis my old uh, donkey, sir. My donkey, she is either lost or uh, stolen. Uh, and if I don't find my donkey, sir, I won't be able to carry my goods to the market, sir. And if I don't carry my goods to the market, my family will go hungry tonight. Can you help me, please, find my donkey, sir? I'm. hungry now said the wizard and slammed the door on that man's face no sooner had he done this the pot began braying like a donkey e a e a e a e a and it also started making sounds of somebody's you know stomach groaning and moaning a Ah so now the pot was clanging braying and groaning clang clang e a clang clang a and kept sprouting more warts all day long that wizard went crazy because the noise was terrible it was as if there was a donkey roaming around and around and around him he didn't know what to do he tried all his spells but nothing worked then it was time for supper he was at the table and there came another knock and this time at the door there was a young woman and she appeared to be in great pain <laughs> <laughs> master please please help me my daughter is so sick 
If you don't help her, I'm afraid she's going to die, please. I beg you. Your father had told me to come here for help. Please, oh kind master, please help me. I love my baby. Bam! The wizard just slammed the door on that poor young lady without even speaking to her. Now, the pot filled up with salty water and every time the pot jumped, tears began slopping everywhere in the house. Ah, it was terrible. From that day, none of the villagers came to him for help. But that pot kept him informed of all the problems of the village. Like how our TV tells us everything that's happening around the world. In the same way, the pot told him of all the problems that the people of the village were experiencing. Soon, the pot was not only clanging, braying and groaning. It was also <laughs> coughing, retching, howling like a dog, and crying like a baby. And not only was it spewing tears, it was spewing bad cheese. Oh sour milk and a plague of great big slimy slugs. Oh. The wizard had no clue what to do. Well, he tried everything but there was nothing he could do. The house was all dirty. There was stinky cheese and bad milk and slugs everywhere. Every time he walked, he would step on five slugs. Patak! That's what would happen. And the sound was unbearable. Finally, the wizard could take it no more. So one night, he threw open the doors of his house, took his wand with the pot following him. He went into the village and he said, Give me your problems, give me your woes, give me your illnesses and I will cure them. I will mend you, comfort you because I have my father's little cauldron. So saying, he began casting spells on all the houses where there were problems. That little girl who had warts all over her face, the warts, vanished. What about the donkey that was lost? It was summoned and deposited very softly in its stable. The little baby who was not well, she was doused with dittany and woke up healthy, rosy and smiling. One by one the wizard cast spells and solved all the problems of that village. Soon, the pot stopped howling like a dog, crying like a baby, retching, coughing, groaning, uh -oh, uh -oh, uh -oh, and stopped braying too. No more tears spilled out of it, nor cheese, nor bad milk, and the slugs just vanished. What about the warts? They disappeared too and the pot was nice and shiny and clean. But did it stop clanging? No, it still clang, 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 clang. The wizard said, what more do you want? What else can I do? Then the pot belched loudly. <coughs> And from the depths of that pot, that small, furry, thick slipper came out. And the pot allowed the wizard to fit 
that slipper on its brass foot. So when the pot jumped or hopped, the sound was not there. The sound was muffled. The wizard was so relieved and he went back home. And from that day, he never refused to help anyone because he was afraid that if he stopped helping, the pot would throw away its slipper and start clanging, clang, 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 clang once again. Well, that was the story all the way from England called The Wizard and the Hopping Pot. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. I definitely enjoyed narrating the story to all of you. So in between the stories, I am going to be giving you some tips, some tricks about how you can become better storytellers. Mind you, I didn't tell you how you can become good storytellers because I believe that each and every one of us is already a good storyteller. You don't believe me? Think every day. What do you do when you come back from school? Ah, you tell the story of everything that happened from the time you went to school till the time you came home. What about when we go to office? We tell them what happened at home. And when we come back from the office, we tell them what happened in office. So every one of us is a storyteller. I firmly believe that. But telling stories to our parents or to our friends or to our brothers and sisters is a little different from telling stories in front of an audience. Well, now because of the corona you know, pandemic, uh, we mostly uh, tell stories uh, virtually, but eventually when the pandemic passes and we can go back to uh, storytelling live, the tips that I am going to give you will surely be very, very useful. Now, let's say you have uh, maybe a storytelling competition in school or in your apartment complex. Uh, there is uh, some kind of a talent show happening and you want to tell a story. Well, a few tips that uh, will definitely help you to be a good presenter and a good storyteller. First thing, choose your story wisely. Now, what do I mean by that? When you narrate a story, you should first of all enjoy reading or listening to that story yourself. If you choose a story that you think is blah, then you will not do a very good job of narrating that story. So if you have a choice and you can select a story, please select a story that works for you. Okay, so that's the first thing. Second, practice. Well, cricket players practice, uh, people who play instruments practice, we practice before presentations, then the same rule applies to storytelling as well. Practice, practice, practice till you become good at your story. While practicing, remember one thing, don't learn the story by heart. The danger of learning your story by heart is that if you forget something in between, you will end up standing on the stage with your mouth up, open and your brain blank. So please don't by heart your story. Instead, what you can do, you can remember the sequence of events. First, this happens. After that, this happens. And then this and this. And finally, this is how the story ends. So remember the sequence of events and use your own words to narrate the story. Now, how do you practice? Stand in front of the mirror. Practice in front of it. Narrate your story. Look at your expressions. That is the first level of practice. Then go narrate the story in front of your parents or your siblings or your good friends. 
ask them for feedback ask them how am i narrating this story is there anything that uh, you know i can improve upon so uh, take feedback from your loved ones and work on your story yeah now these are the things you have to keep in mind before the storytelling now what about while narrating the story first and foremost the volume of your voice is very important now if you have a mic like the way i have you really don't need to speak very loudly because the mic is powerful enough to capture your voice but what if you're in the class where there's no mic but everyone in the class needs to hear you then you have to practice being loud enough so that everyone can hear you loud and clear now don't scream at the top of your voice then everybody will cover their ears and tell you to shh so don't do that but don't be so soft nobody can hear you if you speak so softly so speak in a voice that everyone can hear clearly that's one thing what about the pace of your story don't be too fast like a fast bowler don't be like a spinner either you know very slow once upon a time there was a king the king had four children everyone will fall asleep if you tell your story like this so don't be too slow but don't also say once upon a time there was a king and uh, he had four children it will look as if you want to catch a train and that's why you're hurrying up no 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 both are no nos pace your story don't be too fast don't be too slow be at the right pace what about being loud and clear hmm clear or, you know you have to be clear if you mumble like this nobody can understand what you're telling one word of what i'm saying will not be clear to you can you understand anything i'm saying at all that's because i'm mumbling and jumbling as if i'm eating something nobody will understand so your words have to be loud have to be clear so that your audience can follow what's happening then don't stand in attention and tell your story i see usually small kids you know poor things maybe they're nervous they stand like this as if they are uh, in some kind of a military parade and they stand in attention and tell their story na you know god has given us hands god has given us legs so let's use them while narrating the story it's fun if you can show the breeze like this instead of standing like this so please don't stand stiff while narrating your story what about your eyes you think that only your voice is important this these two play a very important role while narrating the story now imagine you're in a class or you are in a place where you can see your audience today i only uh, am uh, able to see two people sasish and uh, saurabh but you will be able to see everyone else in your audience right please don't do this and tell your story once upon a time there was a king who had four children no it just doesn't work you need to look at your audience you need to maintain eye contact with them then that connect is established hmm? but don't stare at them like this then they'll get scared and run away from there don't do that but just you know look at a few people here look at a few people there and there and you know something i'll give you a small tip there will be some people in the audience who will <laughs> be bored they may even fall asleep or nowadays you know how it is people sit with their uh, phones and uh, you know uh, keep browsing or texting or something there will be people like that you have to be prepared but i will guarantee you there will be people in the audience who will be watching you listening to you because they are enjoying your story latch on to them look to them because when you see them shaking their head as you're telling the story your confidence will increase and uh, so that was uh, one of the tips and uh, one more thing that you can do is in your story if there are three four characters you know not only one you can use different voices 
maybe for a child's uh, if there's a child in the story you can use a very uh, squeaky childish voice or if there's an old lady you can sh shake your voice like how you know very old people speak or you can use different accents and uh, keep uh, you know the uh, liveliness of the story going but remember to use the same voice for the character throughout the story unless your child grows big make sure that you use the squeaky voice throughout the story let the child's not voice not become thick and low suddenly in the middle of the story it's not going to work no yeah so maintain the same voice for your characters throughout the story and most importantly enjoy the narration process because when you enjoy it your audience will enjoy it too okay now that's uh, enough of uh, gyan for the time being i will give you some more uh, tips and tricks uh, after my next story which will take us not to any particular country it will take us to a magical land because this is a kind of a fairy tale okay stop rolling your eyes now when i say fairy tale do you think you're too old to listen to fairy tales no this is not your usual fairy tale and i hope you enjoy it the story is called paper bag princess the paper bag princess and it is by robert munch who's written some really really lovely stories so without further ado let's begin the paper bag princess and for a princess story we need a princess right princess elizabeth had everything a princess could ever want she had long golden hair a beautiful collection of crowns some lovely expensive exquisite jewelry Oh, and what about her dresses and gorgeous frocks? She had cupboards full of them. She lived in a big castle, a really big castle with one hundred rooms. I don't know how she ever found her way through all those rooms, but that's where she lived. And she had loving parents too. Very important, you know, Princess Elizabeth. was not the kind of princess who thought that looks were the only important thing for a princess uh uh she was a princess who believed that when she became queen she needed to know how to rule her kingdom how to take care of her subjects she wanted to be a good queen so princess elizabeth took lots of classes She took Spanish classes. Buenos dias, hola. She took Japanese classes. Konnichiwa, konnichiwa. She took music lessons. La 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 la. She took. karate lessons yeah all kinds of lessons because she wanted to be a well rounded person now we have a princess so naturally there is going to be a prince now princess elizabeth was engaged to be married to prince ronald princess elizabeth prince ronald Prince Ronald was quite different from his fiance very different in fact all he cared about was looking handsome and smart and good he bought clothes by the dozen kept by new crowns though he had several already with him went to get groomed every single day he set his hair every single day and believed that looks were absolutely important 
didn't believe in uh, anything much other than that. But anyway, somehow they got along well, Elizabeth and Ronald, and they did a lot of fun things together. They went horse riding together. They danced together. La, 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 the two of them, very different kinds of books, but yeah, they did read together. Uh, Elizabeth would read books like How to Be a Good Queen, How uh, to Improve One's Japanese, and uh, Ronald would read books like How to Look Good 24 Hours a Day. Yeah, and that's what he read. Uh, but anyway, so they read together. They had a you know nice relationship, and they enjoyed the time that they spent together. Now one afternoon, one balmy afternoon, Princess Elizabeth and Prince Ronald were uh, sitting in the royal gardens and chit-chatting and discussing a lot of things when they heard a... What do you think they heard? They heard a... There was a fire-breathing dragon, and he took a deep breath, and he burnt down half the castle. He took another deep breath, and he burnt down half the gardens, and they were shivering with fright, the poor things. They decided to stay quiet so that the dragon wouldn't notice them. Then the dragon spotted Ronald and Elizabeth, swooped down and picked up Ronald and started flying away. Elizabeth! Ronald! Elizabeth! And the dragon and Prince Ronald vanished. Poor Elizabeth! She was worried her fiance had been taken away by the dragon. What if the dragon ate him? What would she do? But she decided not to panic. She decided to go and rescue her prince herself. She was smart enough. She was brave enough. So she thought she would go and rescue her darling prince Ronald. Now, as she was walking to rescue her prince, a piece of the castle fell on her, like this, uh-oh. And with great difficulty, <laughs> she came out of the rubble. But because that piece of the castle was, you know, kind of burning, her clothes had almost been burnt right off, uh -oh. And she felt shy. She literally had nothing on. How could she go and save her prince without wearing any clothes? She felt shy. So she decided to hunt for something that she could use to, you know, as a dress. She looked here and she looked there and she finally found a paper bag. Yeah, she was not used to wearing paper bags, but something was better than nothing. So, <clears throat> so with great uh, difficulty, she slipped into a, 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 a paper bag oh my god yes yes she wore a paper bag and she said ronald don't worry i'm coming to rescue you and she followed the dragon it was easy to follow the trail of the dragon because he had burnt forests in his wake so she just followed the trail of the burnt forest and then reached a place where she found a gigantic cave with a gigantic wooden door. She realized that the dragon must be inside. So, bam, 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 bam. She banged on that door and out came the dragon. Who are you and why are you here? Uh, 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 I'm uh, Princess Elizabeth. Uh, uh. 
I am full today. I have eaten an entire castle full of people. I don't want to eat you today. You go away and come back tomorrow, he said. And went back inside. Oh, now Princess Elizabeth didn't want the dragon to go inside. She wanted to rescue her prince. So she banged on the door again after thinking of an idea. Bam, 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 bam. Don't you understand English? Uh, do you want me to speak Russian? Why are you not going away? Leave me. Go away. I want to sleep. My stomach is too full. Uh, actually, uh, I am writing an article in the newspaper about the best dragon in the world. And somebody told me that you are the best dragon in the world. Uh, oh, yes, uh, I am the best dragon in the world. Uh, thank you very much, the dragon said. Well, you know, somebody told me that the best dragon in the world can burn down 10 forests with one breath. Is that so? 10 forests in one breath? Uh, it is a little uh, uh, difficult, but I will try. Don't worry, I'm sure I can uh, do it. And he took a deep breath. <gasps> and he destroyed ten forests with one breath. Bravo, 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 said the princess. Can you please do that again? Pretty please, pretty please, pretty please. Uh, again, it is very difficult, uh, but uh, I am the best dragon in the world and I can do anything. So he took another deep breath. And burnt down another ten forests. But after that, <laughs> not even smoke came out of his mouth because he had exhausted his entire arsenal of fire. You know what? Somebody also told me that the best dragon in the world can fly around planet Earth in ten seconds. Is that so? Can you fly around the world in 10 seconds? Oh, that is a child's play for me. Uh, I must say dragon's play for me. And I will uh, fly around the world in 10 seconds. You just watch, uh, my dear princess, said the dragon. And he took off and whoosh! He flew around planet Earth in 10 seconds flat. But he was tired after that. <laughs> ah, bravo! Bravo! Said Princess Elizabeth. And then she said, Can you do that again for me, please? Pretty, pretty, please. Oh, again? Well, all right. I will uh, fly around the world again. Don't worry. And he hunkered out and woo! went around the world and came back in 10 seconds. But he was so exhausted after this, he just fell asleep. <coughs> Dragon, wakey, wakey. Dragon, wakey, wakey. Dragon, wakey, wakey, she said. But he was fast asleep and that's exactly what Princess Elizabeth had wanted. So she climbed over that dragon and went inside to that cave. And she began searching for her beloved Ronald! Ronald! Where are you? Ronald! And then she heard from a distance, from somewhere deep, 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 deep inside the cave. Elizabeth! Ronald! Elizabeth! Ronald! Well, the problem was that Princess um, Elizabeth saw that Prince Ronald had been tied up in chains. She said, I'm so happy the dragon has not eaten you yet. Come, let's go quickly. The dragon is sleeping and I've come here to rescue you. 
Elizabeth, what is that you're wearing? asked Prince Ronald. Oh, oh, that's a paper bag, Ronald. It doesn't matter. The castle burned down and my dress burned down as well. And I didn't have anything else to wear, so I wore this paper bag. So don't worry about it. Come on, let's go before the dragon wakes up. Elizabeth, why is your hair so messy? Why do you have soot on your face and no lipstick? Oh, this is terrible, Elizabeth. How could you come to rescue me looking like a street urchin? Oh, I have an idea, Elizabeth. You go back to the castle. Mm -hmm. You go back. You change your clothes. Put on some makeup. Comb your hair neatly. And then come back and rescue me. I have a reputation and I can't let your clothes destroy my reputation. Elizabeth didn't say anything. She walked close to him and said, Ronald, you are very handsome. You are always well dressed and your hair is never out of place. But you are Ah, uh, and I don't want to have anything to do with you. And she turned around and left the cave without Prince Ronald. Well, our princess, of course, went back to the castle. She helped rebuild, reconstruct the whole place. She walked along with everyone and eventually went on to become a great queen who ruled her citizens with a very fair hand. And what happened to our Prince Ronald? Probably he became the dragon's supper. Well, that was the story of the paper bag princess written by Robert Munch. Now, I hope you folks enjoy that tale. I find it absolutely delightful to narrate. Now, um, before we move on to the next story, I thought we could use some brain breaks. Now, what are brain breaks? Uh, brain breaks are uh, things uh, we can do between activities to uh, center our brains around what's going to come next. Plus, these uh, activities are also very good for your gray matter. So I'll just show you a few. There are many, many more. You can continue doing this um, at home every single day. They say that these small brain boosters are extremely good for your brain. So they're very simple. Uh, they look simple. And honestly, I find it a little difficult too. But this is how some of them work. So you do this. Okay. So one finger is like, you know, one hand. The fingers are like this. And then you make a fist with the other. And then you do this, and then you do this, and then you do this, and this, and this. Come on, go ahead and do it with me. And this, and this. Now this is one. You can do this. Then you you know how we play dandia. You can do this too. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Or you can do. Do this. It's, it's not as easy as it looks. In fact, you have to actively, you know, focus to make sure that you are doing it correctly. So your focus also increases and your mindfulness also increases. And one of the most difficult ones I find is doing this. Okay, so you do this, and then you do this, and you do this, and this. This. And this, and this, and this, and this, and this. Now, all of these um, are good for your brain and they help you build focus and uh, they improve um, your uh, mindfulness as well. So that was just a short break. Um, before I go on to my next story, um, one of the things my students, uh, when I go to school, uh, they ask uh, me a question, ma'am, where do you get your stories? So let me make a confession. Now, I'm not one of those people who writes one story a day. 
no uh, i have written one story in my entire life but other than that all the stories i i narrate are usually picked up from somewhere so where is this somewhere you know you all have a genie at your disposal did you know that like aladdin had a genie hidden inside that lamp you guys have a genie too and that genie is called the internet well of course yes uh, technology has its disadvantages and its advantages and this is one clear cut case of an advantage so you can look up for stories on the internet that's one way of getting stories but remember one thing when you narrate a story written by someone else please always give credit to that person because it's not your story you are only narrating it so please um, you know uh, name the story uh, name the author and if it's also there's a different illustrator please name the illustrator as well and if you want you can name the publisher too they'll be more than happy so that's one way you can you know get uh, lots and lots and lots of stories on the internet then if you are the creative type do feel free to write your own stories because these stories uh, will be very close to your heart since you have created them so you can write your own stories or uh, you can go to your local library and read up books there and get stories from there or you can buy books so buying books while i absolutely love buying books uh, you know there's really no place left in my house to keep adding more books because i already have so many um, so you can buy really good ones which you think you're going to treasure these days you have a kindle or any other kind of uh, you know reading device and you can use that to download stories and read stories or you can talk to the elders of your family maybe your dada ji dadi nana nani you can talk to them and you can ask them to tell stories and folk tales that they have heard from their grandparents so that way the local stories the folk tales will continue living and then one day you can tell the stories to your grandchildren yeah that's how stories have traditionally been passed from one generation to the next so these are all ways uh, in which you can source your stories uh, but remember that when you source your stories please give credit uh, to the author and uh, sometimes even the illustrator okay now so that was one small uh, uh, tip uh, about where you can get your stories from next i have another story for you from another country and i will sing a song from that country and you have to try and guess which country this is so the song goes like this kesariya ba namante aahi padharo mare dikhe sare padharo mare ke do you know which song this country uh, you know the song which country is it from well it is from our very own india it's from rajasthan uh, but the story i'm going to tell you is uh, not from rajasthan but this is a beautiful song that welcomes people to rajasthan when they come from somewhere and i absolutely love this song so today's story that i am going to tell you is called ramans look this story has been written by one of my favorite uh, children's authors uh, from india her name is asha nimaya and this is her story now without uh, you know delaying any further let's start the story of raman's feet raman lived in a village in india he was the best flute player in that village 
Now, every morning when the sun rose in the sky, Raman would sit under the big banyan tree outside his house. He would pick up his flute and he would play. When Raman played the flute, the dogs stopped barking, the cats stopped meowing, crying babies stopped crying, and everyone would just listen to the beautiful melodies that came out of his flute. And when Raman played happy tunes, even the saddest person in the village who would have been sitting with a grumpy face, would smile again. That was the beauty of Raman's music. Now one day, Raman's flute broke. Maybe somebody sat on it or somebody stepped on it. I don't know, but the flute broke. And Raman was worried. You see, Raman would be invited for all the birthday parties, weddings and any celebration in that village to play his flute and there were many functions coming up and he needed his flute but now the flute was broken. So he needed to make a new flute for himself and for that he had to find a bamboo tree whose branches were just the right thickness to make a flute. So Raman wandered here, wandered there in search of the perfect bamboo tree for his flute. He looked everywhere and finally on the banks of a river, quite far away from his uh, village, he found a bamboo tree that, you know, suited all the requirements that he had. But this place was extremely quiet. In fact, it had an aura of, you know, sadness around it. But the, you know, the bamboo uh, the branch was just the right thickness. So Raman cut a length of bamboo, uh, two, three of them, in fact, and he took it home. And then with the sharpest knife that he had, he whistled away at that, uh, you know, uh, branch and created a nice, new flute for himself and he was very happy because just the very next day he had to you know play the flute at a wedding now at this wedding the bride and the groom whom raman knew had given him a playlist like how we have playlists you no know, like that they had given him a playlist of all their favorite songs now, the first song that they wanted him to play was chum 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 they loved that song, so they wanted that song. And they also uh, wanted that song from Ashiki too. Tum hi ho, ab tum hi ho. So Raman had practiced all these songs and he was ready to play them at the wedding. Now, on the day of the wedding, though it was not his wedding, Raman wore his uh, silk uh, uh, dhoti, you know, he put on his red silk shirt put his flute in its velvet pouch and wandered off, you know, to the wedding. He went there and where he was greeted with great respect and great love. They were all, you know, waiting. They were waiting to listen to his flute playing. Now he went there. There was a small stage that had been constructed for him. He went and sat on that, took out the flute from its velvet pouch kept the flute at his lips like this, all ready to play chum chum chum. But what came out of his flute? Such a sad tune. When the bride heard this tune, her eyes filled with tears. 
Brahman saw this and felt very bad and decided to play something really peppy, picked up his flute again and tried once more. And this time, this song came out of his flute. Now even the groom began crying and all the guests began crying and soon someone had the sense to say, Raman, stop. Why are you playing such sad tunes? This is a wedding, not a funeral house. Please, for heaven's sake, stop playing and leave the wedding hall. We don't want our bride and groom crying on the day of their wedding. Poor Raman, he uh, was really looking forward to eating the nice wedding feast but got nothing. He realized that his flute was playing sad tunes and that he needed to make another. So he searched again. He went here, he went there. He went in search of the you know, right uh, bamboo tree and finally found one near the village well. But this place was extremely noisy because all the ladies of the village would come there to draw water from the well and did they come and draw water and leave? No, they would stand there and talk and the brass pots would clang against each other and it was such a raucous place, very noisy but that bamboo tree was perfect. So he cut uh, the length of the you know, uh, branch that he needed went home, took his sharpest knife and he fashioned a beautiful new flute for himself. Not too soon because a few days later was the 90th birthday of the oldest man of that village, whom everyone called Tata with lots of love. And Tata was a very religious man. He had told Raman, Raman, you must play all my favorite bhajans and my favorite abhangs and my favorite devanamas, everything. You know which are my favorites, no? And Raman said, Tata, you don't worry. I will play your favorite songs. I know which they are and I will play your favorite songs. Don't worry. So on Tata's birthday, Oh, all his family members were there, his children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, great-great-grandchildren also. So many people and in fact, almost the entire village was there because it was a big occasion, Tata's 90th birthday. And uh, you know, Raman reached Tata's house and there, you know, everybody was waiting. Tata especially was waiting to hear his favorite songs being played by Raman. So he called, he said, hey, you know, they welcomed him into the house and he sat down and there was pin drop silence. Raman picked up his flute. I hope all of you can hear the flute being played. Yes. Oh, so he picked up his flute and then he wanted to play a beautiful you know, uh, uh, song, uh, you know, it was a Marathi song about uh, 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 about the uh, uh, gods and he wanted to play that song and because he knew that Tata liked this song, it, the song went like this. Tata loved that song and he wanted to listen to it. So he, uh, Raman picked up the flute and he was ready to play. But what came out of his flute? Tata's face was becoming red with anger. He had asked for a song, uh, you know, about Panduranga and here this one was playing Lungi dance. Tata was so irritated. He said, stop. You play something else or you can leave this. Sorry, Tata, said Raman and tried once again. Picked up and tried to play another song for Tata. And this is what came out. <laughs> Loud ding-chack songs were coming out of his flute. 
Tata was so upset, so upset, he threw Raman out of the house. Raman was so sad. He realized that he had picked the bamboo from the sad place and the bamboo had then as a flute played sad songs and when he had cut the bamboo from a place uh, that uh, you know was very noisy the, the flute was playing all kinds of ding chak songs so he realized that his bamboo should grow in a place where there was a lot of laughter a lot of happiness but he searched far he searched wide he couldn't find a bamboo tree growing in a happy place. At last he came back to his village, sat on the steps of the school, wondering what to do. Then he heard the sound of laughter because all the children of the school were running around and playing and having a fabulously good time. And right at the corner of that playground was a clump of bamboos. And Raman thought, aha, this is where I am going to take my bamboo from. And that's exactly what he did. He asked the principal's permission and he took a, a, you know, a length of uh, bamboo and went home and whittled it and made it into a beautiful new flute. Okay. Now, uh, a few days later, there was a baby's naming ceremony in that uh, village and uh, Raman had been asked to play the flute. Now they had decided to name this baby Hari. And uh, Raman had prepared some really peppy, happy, nice tunes uh, for the naming ceremony. He was worried about what would come out of his flute. He was a little scared. But he thought, no, this time everything will become all right. So on the day of the naming ceremony, he reached the house. And the priest was there and the parents were there. The little Kuttu baby also was there. And all the guests had gathered. It's a big thing, right? So Raman reached the house and, uh, you know, everybody asked him to play the flute. So he picked up his flute and started playing with a prayer on his lips because he wanted it to be perfect. And this is what came out of Raman's flute. When people heard this song, they were awestruck and so happy. They began laughing with joy and ha 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 ha. They were so happy. The parents, was, they said, ha ha ha, Raman at last is playing beautiful tunes on his flute. And then Raman switched to an even happier tune. The priest couldn't control his laughter and began laughing. <laughs> and that is how that little baby's name was not Hari, but <laughs> Hari. Well, that was the story of uh, uh, Raman's flute. Uh, and uh, I hope you like that story. Uh, Saurabh, I just saw that you had posed some... Uh, questions, let me just see. Okay, uh, I'm just trying to figure out where I can see the questions. If you can just help me, is there a chat? Yeah. Uh, do I look at it at the ch in the chat? Uh, uh, no, this is where I chat with everyone. Can you uh, just read out the question for me, Saurabh, if you don't mind? Uh, Saurabh, okay, now this is a challenge for poor dinosaur me who's trying to figure out where the chat boxes if um, uh, if you can just tell me where i can look for the uh, messages there there is a i just see chat with everyone is that where i need to look sort of you can just read out the question to me not a problem sure ma'am so ma'am the first question we have with us <laughs> is what are the elements of a good storytelling what are the elements of a good storytelling? One, the story should have a good plot. Because without a plot, no matter how beautifully you narrate, 
uh, there is really um, nothing that can come out of the storytelling. So your story should have a solid starting twists in the middle. If you, if you know Pixar Studios, what they say is your story should generally follow this pattern. So there should be one, you know, once upon a time or what happens on a regular basis. And then there is a Kahani make twist one day. Maybe there's a problem. Maybe there is a terrible uh, thing that happens or something that is out of the ordinary. Then after that, our hero or our heroine tries to solve that problem. So if you look at all the Pixar movies, typically this is the formula that they follow. Everything will be all right. Then there is a problem and then the problem has to be solved. And the problem is solved. And finally, at the end, sometimes it is happily ever after. And depending on what kind of story it is, sometimes the endings are not very happy too. But your plot really needs to be in place uh, if you want to uh, narrate a good story. So I think that's one of the most important uh, things. Sort of. uh, do we have any other questions? I hope whoever has asked this question might have got the answer. So ma'am, the next question which we have with us is what are certain good storytelling techniques? What are the good techniques which oh. is useful for storytelling? Okay, okay, that's a brilliant question. And uh, you know, there are many, many ways in which you can um, uh, tell stories. So one is what I'm doing today, the first one where I'm just using uh, my voice, my expressions, my body to tell the story. So I, two of the stories, I didn't use any props or any external aids, right? So that is one way of doing your storytelling. The second one is to use your puppets. Puppets make uh, excellent uh, story uh, tellers and especially if you're telling stories to really chotu uh, kids, they love puppets. And India, uh, as you know, Saurabh has such a rich tradition of uh, puppetry. It is, I mean, the way they use the puppets in India is absolutely amazing. So, you know, it is a, a tradition that has been there in our country for uh, centuries. And you can use, uh, you know, puppetry. Then you can use props. Now, what do I mean by props? Uh, let's say this is not a puppet, but it is a prop. So you have different objects. It, they could be anything lying around the house. You can incorporate these in your storytelling. So that is another way of doing it. Uh, then you can also use pictures. That's called Chitra Katha. So you can hold the pictures and you can, so the people will be able to see the pictures and you will be narrating the story from the background. So your, your voice uh, will be mostly heard, but the picture is the kind of the hero of the story. So then you are just, the narrator of the story. So that is one more technique that you can use for telling your stories. Uh, then there are several uh, ways in which you can do, you, you know, origami, how we do paper folding. You can tell stories as you are doing your paper folding. You look up on the internet, you'll find paper folding stories or origami stories. So as you're uh, uh, making different shapes, your story unfolds. You can use that. What if you are very good at sketching? Now, I'm not very good at sketching. Saurabh, if I draw a cow, it will probably look like a tiger or something. So I don't do too much of uh, drawing, but I know there are so many who are brilliant at sketching. You can use, you can do draw and tell stories. So where you start out with, uh, uh, you know, something small and then you keep adding as the story goes on. And at the end, you have a picture in front of you. So you can do that. Uh, you can use that as a storytelling technique. Uh, you can tell stories without words, like miming. You can just do the actions and your audience has to be the narrator. So then that way, it's a brilliant technique because you are sure that your audience is uh, paying attention because they are going to narrate the story to you. So you will, uh, you know, um, uh, narrate uh, just with your actions and uh, they will have to then uh, narrate the story. Or you can take picture books. Uh, small children have a lot of these beautifully illustrated books. Some are with words, some are without words. So you can, you know, show a picture book and ask them what is happening in this picture. So then each child may come up with a completely different story. 
because each of our imaginations is extremely different, right? Not one person's imagination is like the other person's. So uh, the stories that come out from this can be vastly, vastly uh, different. So all, uh, and as I um, did, you can, if you are a good singer, or you can play a musical instrument, you can incorporate them into your storytelling. Or maybe you're a great dancer. To dance and show your story, why not? Uh, all our classical dance forms are essentially, you know, katha is nothing comes from katha. So basically you're doing storytelling through dance. So if you're a great dancer, you can incorporate dancing in your storytelling as well. So all these uh, uh, techniques can be used for storytelling. And I hope you will be able to use them um, whenever you want to narrate a story next. Yeah, Saurabh, do we have anything else? Or uh, do I have time for one more sto short story, maybe? Uh, Ma'am, actually, we have one last question left. Oh, sure, sure, no problem. So the question is, how can a story be interesting? How can a story be interesting? If you ask me, Twists in the tales are in the, in the tale, you know, some twist, as they say in Hindi also, Kahani made twist. Without that, a very predictable story, not uh, uh, very interesting. You have to have some twist and, you know, sound effect. So it's like, you know, you have these art movies. I don't know, these kids, whether they have watched where, they will 20 minutes, they'll show someone brushing their teeth. Nothing is happening. But while brushing the teeth, just imagine if there is someone standing behind that person ready to attack, then your whole story changes. It becomes so much more interesting, right? So I believe that a twist in your tale is very important to make it interesting. And, uh, you know, even the descriptions that you give, can, you can make it interesting uh, by giving good descriptions or connecting your story with what is happening around us that is another technique of making a story relevant as well as interesting so that's how you can make uh, stories interesting yeah so Saurabh, are we done with the questions or do we have any more um ma'am these were and uh, these were only the questions you okay. can proceed okay so i have about 15 minutes left uh 12 minutes left 12 minutes left okay thank you so much um, now to finish today's uh, session, I am going to narrate um, uh, one of my favorite stories because it's extremely irreverent. It is um, quite in your face and I absolutely love it. Again, this story is by Robert Munch and probably because he's from Canada, I think that this story is set in Canada. The story is called Stephanie's Ponytail. Okay, now, so for this story, I need something. Okay, all right. Now, Stephanie was a little girl who loved to be unique. Now, what is to be unique? To be unique is to want to be different from everyone else. You don't want to copy. You don't want to be a copycat. You want to be unique. So she loved being unique. One day when Stephanie went to school, she saw that none of the girls in the class was wearing a ponytail. Everyone had their hair open like this. Nobody was wearing a ponytail and that gave her an idea. Ah, if I wear a ponytail, I'll be the only one wearing a ponytail in the class. So she went home and she told her mom, mom, can you please give me a nice ponytail coming right out the back of my head when I go to school tomorrow? And mom said, yes, my love, I will give you a beautiful ponytail coming right out the back of your head. And that's exactly what happened the next day. Stephanie's mama gave her a lovely ponytail coming right out the back of her head. So Stephanie went to school and as soon as she entered her class in her ponytail, the children of the class began chanting, ugly, ugly, very ugly. But Stephanie was not the kind of girl who cared about what other people said. So she looked at them and she said, it's my ponytail and I like it. 
She didn't bother. The next day, when Stephanie wore her ponytail and went back to school, all the girls of the class had ponytails too. Stephanie was not happy with this. She wanted to be unique, which is why she had worn a ponytail. Now everyone, all the girls in the class were wearing ponytails. So she went back home and she said, Mama, the girls in my class, they are copycats. So I don't want this ponytail tomorrow, Mama. So tomorrow, when I go to school, can you give me a nice ponytail coming right out the side of my head? Mama said, yes, my love, I will give you a beautiful ponytail coming right out the side of your head. And that's exactly what happened the next day. Stephanie's mother gave her a beautiful ponytail coming right out the side of her head. And Stephanie went to school with her ponytail coming right out the side of her head. And when she entered the class, a classmate started chanting, Ugly, ugly, very ugly. But Stephanie said, it's my curvy tail and I like it. On the next day, when Stephanie went to school, all the girls in her class and even some of the boys had ponytails coming out the side of their head. Why do you guys copy me? I want to be unique, said Stephanie. But she was really upset with the fact that everybody was copying her. So she took off her ponytail. She went home and she said, Mama, all the girls in my class and even some of the boys had ponytails coming right out the side of their heads. So Mama, tomorrow morning, when I go to school, can you please give me a lovely ponytail coming right out the top of my head? And Mama said, yes, my love, I will give you a beautiful ponytail coming right out the top of your head. And that's exactly what happened. The next day, Stephanie got a nice ponytail coming right out the top of her head like this. Like this, like a coconut tree. And she went to school. And everybody said, Ugly, ugly, very ugly. Stephanie said, It's my curly tail and I like it. The next day, all the girls in the class and all the boys in the class had pony tails coming right out the top of their heads. Stephanie didn't know what to do. So she took off a pony in anger and she went home and she said, Mama, all the girls and all the boys in my class are copying me. So Mama, tomorrow morning when I go to school, can you give me a nice ponytail coming right out the front of my head? And Mama said, yes, my love. I will give you a beautiful ponytail coming right out the front of your head. And that is exactly what happened because the next day when Stephanie went to school, she had a nice ponytail coming right out the front of her head. Well, she couldn't see clearly, but that didn't matter. She was unique. When she entered the class, Everyone said, ugly, ugly, very ugly. Stephanie said, it's my ponytail and I like it. The next day when Stephanie came to school, all the girls and all the boys in her class and even the teacher had ponytails coming right out the front of their heads. There was utter chaos and confusion in the class that day. Two boys went into the girls' bathroom. Three girls went to the boys' bathroom. Everybody kept bumping into each other. And nobody could see where they were going. And no studies happened that day. Hmm. But Stephanie was not happy. She took off her ponytail and she said, You know what? Tomorrow, when I come to school, I will shave off my hair. Motte, ganju. No hair on my head. Let me see what you guys are going to do. And she went home. Now, the next day, all the girls in Stephanie's class 
and all the boys in Stephanie's class, and even the teacher and the principal had shaved off their hair. And everyone was waiting for Stephanie to enter. And when it was time, Stephanie threw open the doors of the class with her hair in a beautiful ponytail coming right up the back of her head. And she looked at everyone and said, Ugly, ugly, very ugly. Well, that was the story of Stephanie and her ponytail. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, remember, all of you, stay unique. Be true to yourselves. There will be times when you will be made fun of by others, but don't let that affect you. Be yourself and, uh, you know, you will, uh, you will shine wherever you are. And if you ever feel that people are making fun of you, remember Stephanie and her ponytail. Well, um, I am almost done. Do I have time or are we through? Sora? Uh, <laughs> Actually, we have to conclude the session. Oh, okay. We have to continue the session. <clears throat> Excuse me. Does anyone have any questions or uh, does anyone want any more information? So let me know if you have anything. Um, I am also wondering roughly how many kids are there and are they all from Nagpur or are they from all over the place? Uh, Ma'am, actually the session will be available for all over India. Yeah, Online. that's right. People from Tamil Nadu also are watching you, right from the north, ah, northeast. Very, very nice. So we have people from uh, different states. So Kasakai, Inakpur, fantastic. I hope all of you enjoyed. Thank you for listening to me because without an audience, a storyteller has no work. And today you were a patient audience. You listened to me. Um, I hope you listened to me. Uh, and uh, I enjoyed the stories. Thank you to all of you. I would like to thank the tech team and the Sada. Thank you for being the anchor and uh, for the tech team for your patience. Thank you so much. And I would also like to thank Dr. Mrinalini, who has been in touch with me and, you know, ensure that everything went smoothly and the Raizoni group for organizing this beautiful festival. Uh, I hope, um, Saurabh, you're in Nagpur, is it? Uh, yes, ma'am. We are based in Nagpur. You're based in Nagpur? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I hope I get a chance to visit your beautiful city uh, some year, either as part of the fest or just like that. I've uh, heard a lot about it. So I would love to uh, visit. And to all the children out there, stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, please, uh, go and narrate these stories that you heard today. The four stories, the first one was The Wizard of the Hopping Pot. The second one was The Paperback Princess. The third was The Raman's Flute. And the fourth was Stephanie's Ponytail. So please go, go home. Uh, you're already at home, sorry. Uh, please go and meet your parents and tell them, uh, narrate these stories to them and spread the joy of storytelling. Uh, wherever you are. So that's how stories are not meant to be kept, you know, inside us. We have to uh, spread them everywhere. So please go and narrate these stories everywhere that you can. Okay. All right. So do I have still more time? Then I'll be making a goodbye song. Okay. Or are we out of time? Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. On behalf of the Bombay City Literature Fest, we sincerely express our gratitude towards your acceptance for becoming the speaker in the storytelling session and also for the knowledge shared with us. I would also like to acknowledge our publishing partner, The Speaking Tiger. And I hope all our viewers might have enjoyed this storytelling sessions and I hope that this session would help them to become future storytellers and some good narrators too. So with this, the session ends here. The next session will be Woof by Aparna Kartikian and the timing for the session will be 12 p.m. to 12.40 p.m. Till then, thank you and bye-bye. 
23 educational institutes offering 137 courses. Rising group of institutions, a vision beyond.